Hi everyone, thanks a lot. This is where we left off the last video of the explosion. So I got Neowise after all. First generation and second generation, you'll see a combination of the two in this video. And you know what? First generation beats it. Bushnell Gen 1 went and got the best image of the comet. I'm not going to hide it. Um, and we're going to see daytime orb in the sky filmed straight up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, this is the object that was doing the flash in yesterday's video that I clarified for you this video. We're going to see daytime UFOs. We're going to see the comet. A whole bunch of things we're going to see in this video. Yeah, we could see it. Right there in the sky, big blue beam. You see it? It's right there. Look at it. It's not my camera, guys. I can see it the naked eye. It's right there. Big blue beam right in the middle there. And you guys see it? That's what I'm looking at right there. And I don't know what it is. And it goes all the way up to the top of the sky, right up in the Milky Way. I called my mother to see if she saw it, and she doesn't. Damn, it's still there. It's getting dimmer. I should have filmed it before. Yeah, we can still see a little bit right there in the center. Hard to see now. See it off the center? It's a big blue line. I've never seen that in my life, guys. Guys, look at that blue spot. What the hell is that? It's right there. I can see it with the naked eye. Look at it. Maybe we'll get the camera and take a picture of that. I don't know what the hell that is. Well, I'm going to film it. So I'm in the house actually going to get the P900, but that's, anyways, actually the footage that you already saw. Uh, yeah, I filmed it with the P900, saw about the same thing. This is the infrared camera on daytime, quite simply, and there's a line there that I could see the exact same thing with the naked eye. So the comet appears right there. We're in the northern, exact northern western sky right under where the dipper is going to appear. The line's going right up to it, actually. So could that be the line of debris from the comet, the actual comet, right? Seen uh, widening out, because it does have a wide tail. Well, wish me luck. I'm outside right now. Actually, no, I'm inside, but I'm all set up. I'm all set up, uh-huh, yeah. Neil Wise, that's what I want to go get, but uh, haven't seen it yet. That's the sky right now outside. Camera's right there, you can't really see it, but we're all set up. Clouds at the back over there, but none up there, so we're waiting. Won't see any stars yet. So with the first generation, be patient guys, there's a lot of work, a lot of captures I caught. I caught with the regular camera yesterday too. Um, check this out, this is Neil Wise. We're gonna talk about Neil Wise. At the same time, we're gonna see some amazing different filtering inversion we're going to see with simple colored filters to be able to look at the tail of the comet now this is the one generation and i'm going to show you also the second generation either in this video or the next i have a lot of footage thanks everyone for watching check it out so i'll also explain in the next video how to see it because it's not coming back for another six thousand 800 years. That means you could be reincarnated several times and live several lives and die and come back and die and come back and you'll still not see Neo Wise. So good for you, those who caught it. So we are going in and out of clouds. We're changing colored filters, different intensities of lights as the clouds are going by, better, not better, but um, it's all tests that I'm going to be doing. So enjoy everyone. So we're looking at Neowise. We're talking about a retrograde comet. What is retrograde? It's just quite simply in rotation. It's in a rotational axis. So we're going to find out a lot about Neowise today. With a near parabolic orbit discovered on March 27, 2020 by astronomers during Neowise mission of the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, 
which is known as WISE, which is a space telescope. At that time, it was the 10th magnitude comet, and that was at that time. So by July 2.20, it's bright enough to be visible to the naked eye. I've seen it myself last night. It's one of the brightest comets in the Northern Hemisphere um, since Comet Halley, imagine, in 1997. So now I want to talk to you about exactly what is occurring with Neowise, why uh, when it goes beside the sun we're seeing that um, tail or comet uh, of the comet. A comet is an icy small solar system body that when passing close to the sun it warms up. And this is what's happening to it's warming up, right? It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and what happens it begins to release a gas which is a process called outgassing, right? The process is a visible atmosphere or coma or tail like we're seeing in this video. These phenomena are due to the effects of solar radiation and the solar wind acting upon the nucleus of the comet. So outgassing, sometimes called off-gassing, particularly when in reference to indoor air quality, is the release of a gas that was dissolved, trapped, frozen or absorbed in some material. Outgassing can include sublimation, there's evaporation going on, and um, there's a lot of phase transitions of a sub substance into a gas, so it's transitioning. Pieces uh, catching on fire at the back there. You'll see I'll capture it a few times to show you. You see often a bright light appearing um, coming out of the tail. Like me, depending on where you are, I'm combating light. There's also clouds, so like I say, depending on how you adjust the filters, the tail is longer or shorter. I will show you exactly what it looks like when I'm filming with the one gen raw. Here it is, uh, exposure just a little bit down because it's even more brighter than that when you're filming. And here's a time lapse um, of the comet. You see how it's just moving over with the stars. nuclei can be seen shining very bright and there are two tails on this comet and why showing scientists for the first time something about our solar system they may never have known before first of all there's a uh, uh, two tails one is a gas tail and one is dust the dust is very very bright and the gas trail uh, would be greenish bluish the comet has a curved tail the nuclei is in rotational orbit Here is without infrared with a regular camera and you can't see much of the tail. There is a sign of it, you can see it, but of course this, um, I'm always battling and adjusting the lights around me and uh, whatever's uh, disturbing the image. If it was true that at one point a comet could have hit the earth and destroyed it, asteroid or meteor, Say to yourself, this is a glimpse of what it would have looked like. Seeing your death weeks ahead of time. The original comet would be blue. This is how you see an infrared white. Anything or anyone that shows infrared in another color is either um, the color filter that's with the machine. Like this is my cyan. I'm using the filter of my own infrared um, camera. These filters are right inside of the memory of my camera, my infrared camera. The Z2 has the red possibility of seeing it red, blue, the cyan, different colors, different models, Z2, different Z2 models also. So here's UFOs that uh, just went by either in front of the tail of the comet uh, between me and the comet. And now here is the view when I had spotted it which I'm telling you it is hard to see. I'm completely zoomed out. And you'll see I'll zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and at one point you will see the tail appear on the comet.
Okay, can I see that without the infrared and just a regular light? Yes, right, or UFO? Look at it. Okay, can I see that without the infrared and just a regular light? Yes, right, or UFO? Look at it.